Hello, my name is Matthew Mayer, and this is my bacterial analysis presentation. Let's start with this. Why the ability to ID unknowns is relevant. Yeah, it's relevant for a lot of reasons. The ability to test for certain microbes is a matter of public health. As the old adage goes, a gram of prevention is worth a pound of treatment, and to that end, the identification of microbes is essential. For example, the diagnosis of E. coli in several individuals allowed for the linkage between bacteria and baby spinach, leading to a recall as seen on the right. Now, the application of bacterial identification doesn't end there. <laughs> While there are such things as broad-spectrum antibiotics, without a general idea of the organism you're trying to treat, it's more or less a shot in the dark to whether they're going to work or not. However, knowing the specific characteristics of the organism uh, can lead to faster and more effective treatments. If bacterial identification is so important, then how do we go about it? Well, we go about it through testing. Simply put, most bacteria are too small and similar looking to visually diagnose. Hence, we need methods to identify the individual shapes, gram negativity, acid production, and other chemical processes undertaken by bacteria to properly identify them. This is where some of our tests come in. First, I conducted a gram stain. This allowed me to see the shape, arrangement, and gram charge of my bacteria. With this, I was able to narrow down my search to a gram-positive cosi that occupies a staphylo arrangement. Next, I did a litmus milk reaction. With this, I was able to confirm if acid production was occurring or not. Now, in the image to the right, we'll see two vials. The vial on the right acted as a control and was bacteria-free, whereas the vial on the left was inoculated with my unknown. From this, I discovered whatever the unknown was, it was producing significant amounts of acid. Then I decided to run several differential media plates. Now, I won't be going over all seven uh, that I did because... Only two really stuck out as important. Also, I'm running on significant time constraints. First, the mannitol salt plate. This tested for salt tolerance as well as fermentation and pH change on the media. As seen in the image to the right, the pH indicator was set off, meaning fermentation was taking place. The growth indicates a tolerance to salt. Now, this significantly narrowed my search. I then used a crystal violet plate to confirm my gram positivity suspicions, as it acts as a gram positive inhibitor, meaning the lack of growth was very encouraging to my original hypothesis. Finally, I decided to conduct a gel liquefaction test. Now, this came out positive, and once it did, I knew exactly what I was looking for. A gram positive staphylococci that conducts fermentation has a high acid output and a high resilience to salty environments that could liquefy gel? There was only one option. Combined with a few other less significant tests, I believe this was enough for my final diagnosis of Staphylococcus aureus. So, is Staphylococcus aureus relevant? Does it affect us in any way, shape, or form? Well, the answer to that is yes, absolutely yes, to an alarming degree, in fact. Of the estimated 3 million cases in the U.S. every year, more than 20,000 die. According to the CDC, staff is the leading cause of infections in U.S. healthcare facilities. Staphylococcus aureus is responsible for everything from bloodstream infections, pneumonia, bone and joint infections, which collectively lead to an estimated mortality rate between 10 and 30%. Though, it is important to realize that infections commonly occur in hospital environments. This means that the population this bacteria most often affects are already some of the most immunocompromised in our society, making prevention via proper sanitation ever the more important. <laughs>